So I just thought I'll explain quickly what I'm doing. Um, I folded over the top, James has unpicked the side for the lining. We thought instead of having the lining within the channel that's going to have the wire going through it, we are thinking of doing an extra part to sort of block out light at the top, but have a wide enough channel so it doesn't bunch up too much. And then, um, so yeah, taking the lining out of that channel it just means it's not as bunchy as it would be. And then I'm just going to cut um, a, an inch or so down here to chop this extra bit off, which I can use as paint rags, and then fold it under and, and do the, um, the slip stitch, the invisible hemming on there as well, just with big stitches. So, and then we're going to try it in the van before we stitch a channel, because we don't want to end up with a, a bunchy curtain that won't open. Um, and we are quite challenged with these in the way we're hanging them, because they are quite heavy. So James is going to perhaps have to hang two curtain wires for each one to uh, make sure it stays. But um, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I don't want to be sewing <laughs> forever all throughout this video, but I just thought I'd quickly explain what I'm doing with these. Um, and I've got four to do. I've done one, so I'll do the other three and then, uh, yeah, see what they turn out like. a very good idea. So I've just, hang, I've just hung this one in the van and um, at the back and then tried to see if this gap um, was big enough with a little um, extra channel at the top. So when, once I've stitched along this channel that gives that kind of um, extra height if you like so where the top of the curtain lines up with the top of the window it just gives you that little extra what's the word little extra section of fabric that covers up the light basically that's what I'm trying to do plus it, it probably looked quite pretty as well it's kind of like a little frill almost on the top so I'm just going to stitch along this line here which was there since I, I folded over the um, the top a bit more so Nein, Bubbles. All chilling out in the sun. So this is what it basically looks like. And, and then the other side, a sec. Don't want to move too quickly. And let me just get back a bit. It's quite difficult filming in a van because such a small space to get good angles for videoing but anyway I'm sure I'll get a little bit better at it as I as I practice so yeah basically what I've done or what James has done is put a wire from here to here and then at the back I snipped a tiny little hole to let the hook come through and then that's the sort of channel we I sewed a minute ago and then here, I think rather than needing a tie back for these, I think I'm just going to put a clothes pin peg, what we'd call a peg, just to peg that right back so that James has a, a clear vision of um, out the back window, obviously for driving. And then the other thing, um, so no tie backs there. These are just a little tie back here, something really simple. And then D-ring to hold that. So James is going to put a D-ring on. And then those are kept right out of the way, if you like. And then I've still got the two to go up at the bulkhead. So I will fill you in as we, uh, as we get those up as well. And then I'll give you a little cosy tour once we get the bed made up and things like that, because that will really change the look of it. Anyway, there's a little update while I'm parked at the side of the road. James is collecting water from the spring and I thought I'd do a little update because they're up now. And they look cute as anything. Really cute. Love the orange. Beautiful colour. 
really cosy. So I'm just on my way to the studio this morning and I've had a few days last week where I kind of was agoraphobic, anxiety, couldn't really go out um, and there was one day where I really really wanted to paint, Oops, sorry the bubble there, <clears throat> and, I, and I stayed at home because I slept really really badly and I don't know if I feel that much better this week so far um, but I'm just keeping myself going, doing all the things, if you know what I mean. All the little things add up to really sort of help keep my chin up, <laughs> if you like, throughout these uh, bumpy times. And I think it's, it's really weird that um, I feel 
kind of a bit socially inept at the minute, I'm a bit socially uncomfortable, which surely must be something to do with the long, 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 long lockdowns. Um, but I don't feel the same way talking to you on the YouTube. So that's a bit of a weird concept for me to get my head around. Anyway, what am I going to do today? Uh, I've got a little idea for one of my art journal pages, so I might have a little play in there and loosen up. And I'm also working on a painting. And I'm coming to the point in the painting where kind of 65%, 70% there. And so the final decisions become make or break, really. Um, and it's not like you've got an Apple Z or an undo tool like you have on the, um, say, on digital art. You commit yourself on the paper or on the canvas, obviously. So yeah, it can be, it can feel a little bit tighter, if you like. It can be a little bit slower. Well, it's definitely slower for me because I take my time, I percolate, I make the decisions about my work. So anyway, I've got that to do. So that's the two little things of art I want to get done or progress and I like to leave stuff in my art journal first so that's always nice and then the other thing I was looking around my studio yesterday um, while I was having my matcha I've got some matcha now and my goodness is it nice really nice and it does give a little lift anyway I was sitting having my matcha and noticing that my studio is an absolute mess again and I was kind of thinking for this week's video, I'll do like a full studio tour because I haven't done that since I've moved into this new room, which was probably about six months ago now. Is that about right? Something like that. But no, it's really, really messy and things aren't in place at all. I mean, I, I don't really mind if it's a bit messy, <coughs> but it's very messy. So I don't think that's going to work. So I think what I'll do instead today is have a little tidy up and I also want to sort through some of my art supplies because I want to sort out a little travel minimal art kit for James and I because we'd like to do some little art challenges um, on our little band trips away so yeah if I gather a few supplies James has got a few bits and bobs of his own anyway He's got some watercolours and some brushes, and he's got a sketchbook. And I'm thinking of taking all the things I've got that would be perfect for my minimal art kits. And, and I will show you, because it's quite fun to see people's little minimal art kits, isn't it? If they're going travelling or they're doing some plain air sketching, I always think that's really interesting to see what people choose in their kit. Anyway, I'll show you which little bits and bobs I pick. And I guess it will have um, be influenced by the things I used to take with me when we were living in the van. I had a really small kit and then the second year we were away um, I expanded that to sort of double the size depending on the size of our van at the time. Anyway that's what I'm thinking of doing today. See how I get on. I'm gonna have my matcha with you of course and then Potter in the unexpected studio, I think. It's on the radio, let's see. I'm not sure I'm allowed to put the radio on here, so let's see. Anyway, let's bop a bit on the way. It's another another one of the little things I do to keep my spirits lifted as high as possible and the lights bright, if I can, is to bop and boogie and dance. And car boogieing is also counts, so. I heard you say You found the story All tucked away In the back of the room been lost for years, far away from the glory. 
So I've been having loads of fun putting together my minimalist travel art supplies, my art kit, very tiny, tiny kit, and it all fits in here. So I'll show you in a minute, but it all fits in this zip bag. And I've used some of the things that I used to use when we were traveling full time in the van as well. I've probably put in more than I was expecting to, but it still fits in here, so I thought, why not? And I always think it's really fun to have a peek, have a little snoop, if you like, into other artists and creators' kit, their minimal kit, just to see what their favorite art supplies, the things they can't live without, their go-to things, if you like. So I thought I'd show you what I've selected in preparation for our van life adventures and other adventures too. So whether I'm going out on an artist date or whether I'm just sketching plain air or whether it's a van life adventure, I've got my little travel kit. So without further ado, let's go to my desk and then I can show you what's inside. So let's just clear this out of the way and then I can bring the kit in. Let's put those out of the way as well. See, I'm not really prepared for this demo. Give me a little sneaky peek in there. So everything fits really nicely in this little bag. And I got this bag from Paper Chase. Um, a couple of years ago it was in the sale and it was like a giant pencil case and I thought oh I love that and it's like a canvasy bag um, and I thought I might paint it at some point as well to decorate those flowers anyway let's just see what we've got inside then so the first thing I will show you is my paint sets and this set is from a shop in Brighton and it's got a little palette as a lid and then four layers of the colours and I'll try and link this down below because I can't remember the um, the make if you like. This is the Windsor & Newton set, uh, the Cotman, so it's very basic and they're not super high quality pigments, they're not the best quality uh, Windsor & Newton pigments but they're not bad, I, I like them and I actually got this set as a present from the, one of the parents, one of the mums, in the very first class I ever taught. So it was a year three class and the little girl's name was Emily and I can't remember her mum's name but she was a lovely mum and she bought me that and it really got me back into painting so it's a really special little piece of kit for me. And you can see here I, I've swatched um, the colours and also it comes, I've still actually got this little, if I can get hold of it, hang on, got the little brush that goes with it. So that gives me a nice little fine brush if I need one. That just fits in there. So there, there you go. So that's the paints. So what else have we got then? I've got a little jug here that went with my diffuser that I bought and I don't really use it. I just pour water in straight from a bottle. And I've got another one of these anyway. So little lightweight, but small plastic, container for water very useful to have and and then I've got two pencil cases let's just move that out of the way for a minute so this pencil case is teeny tiny pencil case as you can see and I got this pencil case from paper chase as well but many years before the um, the other case so in here I've got all my drawing um, supplies and I've got, let's just see, I've got my Faber-Castell 2B mechanical pencil with a rubber on the end and that's got spare leads in it as well. I've got a WH Smith pencil crayon, a brown one because I quite like sketching in brown sometimes and speaking of brown I've also got a Pilot um, and that's the brown one as well. A nice really fine nib on there. And then I've got two microns, a three and a four. And I actually got those when I visited China a couple of years ago. They're still going. And then I've got another um, black pen. And I've put this one in because it's actually water soluble. So I can do the line and then wet it. And it gives me a bit of a bleed line. And then I've also got this little rubber, and this is from, let me see, just let me get my glasses on. I'm going to sec. It's a Mono Zero from Tombow, so that's that as well. And that's all that's in there. And then in this one, 
I have got two little rolls of washi tape, which are good for masking and lots of other things. Um, a pencil sharpener with a bin on it, so yeah, keeps all the shavings in one place. I've got a little tube of white gouache from Doe Crafts, so just a really basic range. And then I've got paint brushes. So I've got three different water brushes in here, different size brushes. So I've got a large, medium and a small, and you can fill those with water. And I also bought a larger brush as well, in case I want to do some wash work, washes. And then I bought a little filbert as well, which I'll probably use mainly for the, um, the gouache. So those are the brushes I bought. And then the other thing, the only other things in here are a pair of scissors. You never know when you might need a pair of scissors. <laughs> and also a Derwent water spray. So just a little water spray, which is good for wetting the paints, wetting your paper, yeah, all sorts of things. So if I don't feel like pouring a jug of water, I've got the paint, these um, with water in it already, and yeah. So the very last things I have in my bag are my sketchbook, which is a, a Sea Whites of Brighton sketchbook. And that's quite a new addition to my kit. I'll put that in the corner so you can just see the corner of it. I'm running out of space. I've also got two pieces of kitchen roll. Nice absorbent kitchen roll. Really handy to have when you are watercolouring. And a pack of wet wipes. with hardly any left in them, so they're not going to take up much space. I do have a really teeny tiny um, little pack of wet wipes, so I might put those in instead. And last but not least, I have two little packs of Strathmore paper, and it's the artist's trading size. Um, and there's one watercolour and one's a Bristol. So this has kind of got a vellum surface. And this is a cold press watercolour, in case I just feel like doing some little studies and things like that. And that is it. That's my little travel art kit for adventuring. I almost put a few collage items in as well, but I didn't because I know that collage can be really annoying on the road. And I thought if I do want to just sort of tape something in, I've got the washi tapes to just do that with anyway. So if I have, I don't know, a napkin or a menu or something like that that I gather on the road while we're adventuring, um, yeah, I can just do those with the tape. And I've probably got far too much. I mean, if I'm just going out um, and I'm traveling really super light, I'm going to take my sketchbook and my mechanical pencil with rubber on the end and that's all I take out, out with me. And then if I want to do a little bit more than that, I might take the, this with me and then I've got some water, a brush, watercolours and my pencil and that's a really minimal kit or I could even take the, the round ones as well and some of the water brushes. So I can mix and match a little bit. And then, you know, when I get back to the van, if I didn't have my pen, I might want to do some line work over the top or something like that. So there's a little bit of flexibility within the kit as well, which I quite like, because sometimes when you're on the road, you're in the mood for doing different things as well. So I hope you enjoyed that little peek into my travel kit. So I'm going to put everything back now and see if I can get it all to fit. Yeah, see if I can remember where everything went. Cute, huh? Really cute. Nice and minimal, not too heavy. And then hopefully that'll tick all my boxes while I'm out and about adventuring. And if not, I will adapt it and, of course, update you with any um, additions or subtractions. I can see me going smaller sometimes if I'm just going away for, a, say, a day trip or an afternoon and I just want to sketch or something like that. But, um, yeah, it was really fun putting that together. Put it this way. Anyway, it was much more fun doing that than facing the mess I've got in my studio and tidying up.
And the other fun thing I've done is I've prepared the prizes for the giveaway. So if you saw last week's video with me celebrating my one year on YouTube, I'll link that somewhere up there if you've not seen that one yet. I mentioned that I was going to be having the giveaway for this week. And I'm going to announce the giveaway today. Um, you don't have to do anything complicated. It's basically just like and subscribe and leave a comment and things like that. But I'll show you what the winners will win because I've got three winners. Um, I think last time I did a giveaway, I had a main goodie bag for the main prize and two runners up. But this time I've just got them all the same. So it's just three prizes. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world either. Just put this down. So you can enter wherever you are geographically. I will cover the postage more than happily to say a big massive thank you for supporting my YouTube channel and helping me to grow and keeping me company and all your lovely comments and just the community that has grown over the last 12 months. It's been absolutely amazing and I really enjoy all the conversations that we have. So. How can I show you the prizes then? I'll have to take you over there. Hang on a sec. So I've basically got three prints and three postcard size prints, so three mini prints as well. And I've got two fairies and a mermaid. So let's just start with Fairy Secret. So she's written a poem. So she comes with a poem as well. So that's a little bit extra. And then the print of Fairy Secret and the mini print postcard so that's prize number one and then prize number two is earth fairy so again the print and the mini print postcard size that's prize number two and then prize number three is delphine the mermaid and again you get a print and a mini print postcard so you can use these, you can frame them, or you can send them to somebody, or you can even use them in your art journals. And then, and then all the prints I will sign on the back with a little message just for you, for the winners. So that's what you win. And then if you want to enter, hang on a sec, I'll turn the camera around again. So if you want to enter the giveaway, all you've got to do is subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, like this video, and leave me a comment down below. And that's all you need to do to enter. And I will pick the winner in two weeks. So by the time this video goes up, it will be Friday. So a week today, a week on Friday, I will close the giveaway. And then that gives me and James a week to put all the names together in the electronic hat, if you like. And then we'll draw names the following week. So in two weeks from now, we'll pull the names out of the hat. I'm not going to put them in a real hat because I did that on the very first giveaway and it took hours and hours to cut everybody's name out and put them in the hat. So yeah, we'll do it electronically like we did the last one. So I hope I've explained everything okay. I wish you lots of luck and good fortune if you do enter. Thank you so much for watching. Try to keep your lights shining bright and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye. school when they met things got kind of awkward with sparks in the air he would stare at her in class and she would try to act cool but it was obvious like ooh, they would be together One day she said, write me a love song, cause I know you'll make it beautiful, and maybe I'll call you my sweetheart.